What is up, guys? Bonafide Hustler here. Uh, welcome to How to Garage Show for Profit, episode four. I think I started on time. Man, I got a little pain today. I did a correct lift. I just I don't know if I was warmed up enough or what. But anyway, I just took some ibuprofen, and uh, it's definitely hurting a lot right here. So if it looks like I'm kind of out of it for a little bit, that's just the reason why. Um, I do want to welcome you to the show real quick, um, making sure that we are sounding good. So I have two people in the feed right now that are commenting let's just make sure that i sound good and you guys can hear the stuff because that way when the content comes you know we want to make sure that you guys can hear it anyway um you know happy friday to everybody i, I usually do these shows on a friday because it's a little bit more of a wind down type day and it's perfect it's the perfect day to get you know charged up for garage sales so you know unlike other types of shows that we might do to wait some days before you can go to garage selling or whatever. I mean, this one is like the day before um, garage sales. And also, um, I don't know if you guys went to garage sales this morning. I went to three garage sales this morning. Uh, one was really bad. Um, one, I found two trucker hats in. And then the very first one I went to, I scored pretty a lot of stuff. I mean, there's a lot of stuff down here. A lot of stuff. I spent $41. Um, yeah. Got enough good stuff. In fact, one of the things in there is a uh, a running parachute for like Olympic sprinters and stuff. So a weighted running parachute, really crazy. Um, I got a running parachute, trucker hats, brand new Carhartt clothing with tags. Right, that's pretty good. Um, two amazing tennis rackets that I have a feeling are going to sell for incredible money. Um, they are literally like featherweight light. They're so light. Um, two brown label North Face sleeping bags. Um, a Fender guitar that needs a little bit of work, but nothing crazy. And then um, a hydration pack, uh, you know, a bunch of random odds and ends, some, you know, viable little vase thing from Holland. You know, you just got to get out there, guys. It's really all that matters. I mean, you just got to make it out there. And, uh, you know, even if it's a Friday, today when I was at that sale, there was like one piece of my competition next to me. You know, some dude that, uh, and this is one of the things that I'm going to talk about maybe on a Periscope later, but I'll shed the light on it right now. But it really goes to show you that um, I think this one guy, he was driving a Dodge Durango, and um, he had – how do I say it? He had – he was a hustler. I could tell he's a hustler, okay? And, uh, and the reason why I could tell he was a hustler is because after that garage show, there was a Goodwill nearby, and um, I saw him at the Goodwill nearby as well, like thrifting around. So – you know, um, you don't have to be like a rocket engineerist um, to figure that one out. Uh, but when he was at the garage show, he was buying about, I don't know, 20 to 30 remote controls, like remote controls to TVs and random stuff. I didn't see anything really good in there, honestly, but he was just buying them all. And I think that's all he left with. And I was just sitting there like, I know this dude probably messes with eBay. But it just goes to show you that he passed up so much other amazing things that I picked up. I mean, so much stuff that I'm like, I'm not even so, I mean, it's like, what kind of a hustler is this? I mean, if you're only messing with one channel, guys, that's like the biggest mistake that you could be making right now. You got to be messing with Amazon, especially towards the end of the year. You have to be, you must start Amazon FBA. You have to. Um, the other one is you have to be well versed with Craigslist. This is very important, right? Um, and then on top of that, you know, make sure you got your eBay going. Yeah, and if you have room for a booth or some sort of um, you know other type thing, consignment store, then get that in there as well. But if you have just one avenue going, I mean, yeah, you better be rocking and rolling at that one avenue. But I knew that this one guy it's just it's just almost like he didn't have enough knowledge about what to hustle and he just had one avenue going on. I felt real bad for the dude, but what are you going to do, right? I mean, it's just it's all about how much you can learn and it's who you can surround yourself with. So important. So apparently I do sound pretty good. Let me test the camera back and forth. Make sure we're good. I think we're good. Um, I think we're good. Let me make a hundred percent sure. Does this sound okay? I might have to, uh, do I have to go closer or further away? Let me know. Um, Kent Daigle says flea bay at the Goodwill. Should have offered your book. I know. Maybe the guy was a, let's see what this person writes. Anyway, so we got a lot of people in the, in the feed real quick. 
Maybe he was a beginner. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. He didn't. He didn't look like a beginner to me. I can usually tell a beginner pretty quickly. So, who do we have in the feed right now? Daniel Fagan, Clarence Clutter for Clarity, Stephen Stafford, Kent Daigle, so can Pan. We have Nike boxes. Sweet diecast boy, what's up, Corey? Good dry. By the way, sweet kind on my workout video yesterday. That was pretty cool. Um, Daniel Fagan, Corey, Sam, Albert Lopez. Okay, so. Anyway, let's uh, talk garage sale stuff. Clearly, I sound okay. And um, yeah, so a lot of people are coming in. Um, all right, so the very first thing I want, the, the way we kind of structure the show is I give you three really good tips, and then um, we go into like a Q&A kind of thing, right? And when you see me looking up here and everything, I have just rows of Post-it notes. So um, I would love to have it here, but this desk is a little on the old side. I don't really want to mess with any kind of like residue from like sticky stuff or anything on this desk because it is and it is a pretty valuable desk so um but anyway let's let's talk about the, the rule number one or the the first little tip of today and this is just something that i tend to do but go faster okay so and what i mean by that is not when it comes to planning or anything but when it comes to your golden hour when you're garage shilling like you need to be going super fast you cannot and the only reason to hold on i mean to hold there or hold steady and chill for a little bit is if you're making a ton of money, right? But if you're not making a ton of money, you don't got a ton of your stuff in your hands. I mean, the only, well, I, I'll take it back. There's there's another reason why you should stay if, and just kind of peruse around and kind of that kind of stuff. And um, that's if you don't have many sales to go to, okay? So if you're in a town that has, you know, it's a Saturday and the rest of America has like 40 garage sales as they can see, or they've marked off on their maps and you've got, four okay so yeah i get it like you're probably going to spend a lot more time on four garage shows as opposed to someone that's surrounded with 40 who would go much faster okay so let's get that out of the way but in general go faster very very important in fact in early bona fide hustler days uh when i was on youtube and that's funny because like this is way back this is like four years ago maybe three and a half years ago when my channel first started out i always told about this one thing uh not necessarily going faster but um you know not being afraid to experiment right very important but then again the reason why i was experimenting is because there was no green room right there was no 100 amazing items to resell guide there was no i didn't even know about youtube right when i was getting started i was making mistakes left and right and that's what i had to do um you know but most of the stuff was wins i ain't gonna lie like most of the stuff was winner kind of stuff that was buying me sushi dinner winner winner sushi dinner right um steak dinner and uh you know parts to my wakeboard boat you know wakeboards and like fun stuff right mountain biking equipment um and i was hustling for that reason because i had a full-time job at that point right like all the way up until about oh nine I had a true, true full-time job um, that was paying really well too. Like I really didn't need a hustle, but I did because I like to be a, ch I'm a challenge kind of guy. Like I like to be challenged to challenge myself and I, I like to be challenged, you know? Um, so anyway, you know, going faster, very important, not being afraid to experiment. That's good. In the day and age we live in now with the YouTube is broad and as crazy as it is, tons of free YouTube videos. You know, I agree with all the guys out there that you know, probably don't want to get into that paid stuff. They're just like, yeah, there's so much free stuff. You're right. There is a lot of free stuff. Um, but they're all, all there are also, there's also something to be said about a community that thrives itself on non-negativity and, um, you know, the sharing of really amazing items, right? We do have that in the green room. So I'm not going to lie about that. That's definitely there. We have a lot of, you know, the more you learn, the more you make. That's the, uh, that's just the way it is, right? The more you learn, the more you make, the less you experiment. But if you, don't learn that much, then you're going to have to start experimenting a little bit on your own. That means burning cash. You're going to have to. So um, it's kind of a important thing to realize. Like a lot of people are, you know, like, oh, I'm just going out with like my last 50 bucks, you know, you know, maybe have a budget on garage sales on the weekend. Maybe not, you know, uh, th five years ago, my budget on garage sales was like 680 bucks. That's what I would take around with me like five years ago. Now, I mean, I've just gotten so much smarter about everything that uh, I can't remember the last time I actually threw on a garage sale, like down... 680 bucks i just i can't remember the last time i just so i usually shake out somewhere in that like three to five hundred dollar range um but uh you know you got to get out there and as i got better and smarter and did what i had to do and made less mistakes and all that kind of stuff um i was spending less money but i was making more does that make sense and that's important you want to get to that kind of level that's a, that's a level that's uh where insane like, you know intense proficiency has occurred and you know what you're doing. Um, today, when I went to the garage sale, I went real fast through this one. I mean, I stayed, but I went real fast. Um, 
how do I say it? We'll get to that one here in a second. But anyway, the, the point that I'm trying to make is um, don't be afraid to do experiments. And second of all, don't be afraid to do what I call blind buying. Blind buying is when you have the hunch that something's going to be great. Um, you don't want to whip out your phone and do any research there. You just have the hunch. You're just like, all right, you know, like in a perfect example of this is the garage sale I went to today, right? I went there and uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about number three, rule number three here is, or tip number three. But when you go to a garage sale and you see a lot of stuff, right? And you sense something in the tonality of the voice, like, man, these prices are awfully low at this garage sale, like ridiculously low. And when I walked up and I was perusing through and everything, the very first thing I touched was the guitar. How much for the guitar? It's 40 bucks. Okay, cool. And then I do classic things like, um, you know, even with this thing kind of like broken, there's a little tiny broken piece, nothing crazy. I can replace it. Um, they're like, oh, okay, you know, um, 20 bucks. Okay. And then, uh, you know, I wait. I don't I don't go crazy, right? I, I wait, but I keep them in my hand. And then I walk around and I do things, right? And then I get a bundle together. Very important because as I see a couple more things, I'm like, you know what? I know I'm going to be buying stuff in this garage. So I can just tell. I can look at it on a broad scale and go, I'm going to be buying more stuff. So um, at that point, I got the guitar for way less than, you know, than 20 because I piled it in with a big pile. But what I wanted to get to, my point was, I did a lot of blind buys today, a whole lot actually. Um, but it's because I have previous knowledge on things and the addition of this person was in liquidation mode. They have to, they're going to move to Mexico in less than 30 days. Um, and they're just like, everything's a dollar unless it, <laughs> that's what they say. Everything's a dollar unless it clearly looks that it's worth more than a dollar. That's what the lady told me. I was like, that's, pre that's pretty good. I was like, all right, I haven't heard anything that funny in a while. That's pretty funny, but I didn't, I didn't laugh out loud or anything, but imagine being told that guys, right? Everything's a dollar except for anything, except if it looks like it's worth way more than a dollar. I'm not kidding. So, um, yeah. So I got a bunch of stuff, 41 bucks. Right. Um, and when she was like, yeah, almost everything is a dollar, just almost everything. And she was right. About 40% of the things I bought today was a little bit higher than a dollar, but about 60% of the stuff I bought today was straight up $1. Um, and so the $1 things were those blind buys, right? We got brown label, brown label, North Face bags, a dollar each. Um, CO2 cartridges for my mountain bike rides, dollar for six of them. Uh, you know, blind buying. You got to blind buy and not be afraid of, I don't care about wasting a dollar. I don't care about wasting five bucks. Just, I don't even wear, car, worry about wasting 10 a lot of times, right? But I know if the back end is yielding me 100 or two, then I don't care about 10 because now we're running a 1 to 10 ratio. You know, now we're running a one to twenty ratio. I'm okay with that kind of trade. I like that. So that's what you got to be. You know, you can't be afraid of. You got to be able to go. You know, if scared money makes no money, right? The best money made is always people that understand the power of money and the people that know how to leverage money. So, anyway, so I just did this, and um, you know, don't be afraid to experiment. Don't be afraid to blind buy. Um, if you don't feel like experimenting, then learn as much as you can. Okay. Um, but even if you come to a, you know, intense product knowledge such as myself or other people out there in YouTube, you're still going to be doing blind buys. I mean, that's just part of learning more, right? Because not everything in every, not everything is ever covered in any YouTube, every YouTube video or any, every guide, right? Certain things are just outliers. And I, I blind buy all the time. I, every single weekend I'm blind buying. I am not everything, but a, a lot of things I do. A lot of things I do. I'm not scared to lose money. All right. But I really am interested in making a lot of money. So if that makes any sense. Um, <laughs> so funny comments are coming through real quick. Um, Daniel Fagan, and Bonafide doesn't even open his eyes at these garage shows. I don't, man. I'm just like, I'm like a bat. You know, I go by sonar, man. I'm like, mm. like, I feel it. I feel that 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 product right there, just like, I know it's going to pay me like 40 bucks. Mm. I know that I know the shape of it, but I can't open my eyes, right? Anyway, um, it's good to see everyone. If you're learning something, please, you know, it's one of those things like, you know, put, put as many comments as you can. I'll, you know, um, shout out some people and I'll read certain comments out. Um, Stephen Stafford, here, here's one that's just going to come right out of the, here's just, just some random questions, so I'll just answer it. Are all Sony Dispens valuable? No. The one I found today doesn't have an Amazon listing. Oh, that's not good. I don't like creating listings. I hate it. It has Megabase and AMFM. Uh, most of them are going to have me Megabase for sure. Um, AMFM is found on a lot of them as well. Uh, a lot of the more current ones. So um, when I say current, I mean like the dying breed that they are, the last part of the leg, right? 
that's where the AMFM started coming through. That's where the CDR RW came through too. Uh, but the first dismans and stuff were like big. They were heavy. They were bulky. And even, they even had like a satellite battery because some people were trying to use these in cars and stuff. Or no, they were just wanted. They wanted it to be portable. But I'm telling you, like the, some of the very first dismans I ever messed with or that I had back in the day, they had this like satellite battery that was like super, super heavy. All right. They didn't take double A's. They were just this monstrosity of a thing that came in like a case logic looking nylon case. It was so annoying. Um but yeah, like uh, they've come a long way with Dispens. But quite honestly, if if you mess with a Dispens for anything other than resale, that's weird <laughs> because times have moved on, right? Resale Dispens. Um, I flipped the Dispens not too long ago. I think I bought it for forty bucks in Round Rock, Texas, and I flipped it for like I don't even know. Maybe it was like one ninety or two forty on FBA, something like that. So I found that one on Craigslist actually, um, and with the search terms "new inbox NIB." Um, some of my other search terms. We'll talk about that another day. Um, yeah. So <laughs> it's good to see uh, the one I found is really heavy and it has a charger. If it's really heavy and has a charger, I mean, it could be with the one I'm talking about. But the one I'm talking about really has, it's almost like resting on a battery, like a big, flat, black, huge rectangle. It's, it's a really annoying kind of thing. And it's not really worth that much money either. So the ones that are worth money are like some of the colored ones, the Psych, I want to say, P-A-S-Y-C-H or something like that. Um and anything that's like mint or in the box, like mint with the original headphones, you know, original things like that, or the ones that are still in plastic, fortunes, man, fortunes. Um, okay, so let's talk about now uh, tip number two, which is feel the energy of your seller, okay? Very important because you walk up to a garage sale, you got to stay in tune with like how, you know how that, okay, how, how do I explain this a little bit easier for you guys? But like, you know, when you get to, uh, I don't know, maybe a DMV or a supermarket line, and there's someone there that's just, just you know, like, I don't know how to explain it. It's almost like they're just not with society, right? They're just talking in a really trashy manner. They don't care about other people around them, or they're overly negative, um, things like that, right? And you can kind of pick up on these visual and auditory cues. It's really easy to do. So I know everyone probably understands what I'm talking about. So if you go to a sale where you get that kind of a thing where you're like, eh, the guy can't, the guy kind of answered my question a little too fast when I said, does the boom box work, right? Oh yeah, it totally works. Yeah, it should work just fine. You know, and you're like, hmm, that's weird. Like, uh, you know, you look at the person like they're not clean kept. They're kind of like a junker kind of dude. And you're like, I don't know, you know? So you gotta be, you gotta play into, you gotta like, listen to your hunches and go, you know what, uh, if I don't trust that this guy knows exactly what's up with this one unit or whatever I'm buying, pick up on that and leave the sale or get that thing for ridiculously low because something's probably wrong. The same thing is present for someone that you talk to, you encounter, and the prices seem a little too high on everything, right? You're, you're overhearing conversation and banter in the background, and it's just like, damn, this guy's asking crazy prices for his stuff. Then you look around, you realize, yeah, everything's pretty crazy priced here leave just get out of there you got to go right so you got to feel the energy of what's going on in the garage sale if you feel good energy you're probably going to get a you know the ability to bundle you're probably going to be able to get the ability to talk down any price of any item um and uh you know you just got to feel the energy if the energy is good and positive and laughing and they got freaking you know orange juice and a lemonade stand and they're eating donuts dude you know quite honestly like how could that make, not make you happy right if they're in a good mood and everyone you know you're going to be in a good mood and you're probably going to get a good deal. But if someone's in a really like hustler mood, you ever get to the place like it's too early in the morning, I can't do that deal. It's too early in the morning. No. And they're real crass and short with you. Like forget those people, man. Don't come back to that sale. Just leave. Okay. Just go and leave. Like that's just the way it is. Because uh, a lot of these people have still a little bit of attachment to some of their products. And they're like, ah, you know, only I control my garage. So anyway, I want to like, nobody's going to tell me what to do or what to sell. You know, it's like, forget it. You can have it. I don't care. I just don't care. I'm in the business to make money. And uh, when you battle a personality like that, you are losing money. You might not think you are, but you are definitely losing money in the back end. You just don't know it. So energy is very key. Oh, what's up, Thrifty Treasures? By the way, I love you. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Um, no, I, I love the two ladies on YouTube. We have Tanya. We have Margaret. Every time I think about them, I'm like, I love those ladies. They're so nice. They're so positive. They've supported uh, I've supported everything that they've done. They support everything that I do. They even come to Austin and hang out, you know, when the meetups come up in town. And it just seems like family. So I got to, you know, when I say I love you, I just say I love you as a, and 
it's a really good feeling to see people in real life that are resellers that are really nice, sweet, good natured people. Like it just is. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Tanya. Um, so let's talk about the next thing. Everyone's I'm gonna get to some of these uh, comments real quick. I'm in a very relaxed mood. Of course, I don't know if you guys all came in at the same time or what, but when I explained the laying back and everything, I, I pulled a muscle today, like working out, Not, nothing crazy. Like, you know, I'm still functional. I can like do things, but uh, it's just certain tweaks and it's in the neck. Like it's somewhere around here. So like certain things I'm like, Oh, you know, like, Oh damn, you know, but uh, I've taken medication for it a little bit. I really don't want to take medication, but I took some ibuprofen like two seconds ago. And uh, so if it looks like I'm more laid back today, and this is the reason why uh, I do keep a very, very active, healthy lifestyle. That's like pinnacle one, I mean, priority number one in my life. But when something's priority number one, doesn't matter if you're an expert at this or that or thing, things go sour sometimes. Just That's just what business and life's about. Like things will just go sour. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't over protect yourself. You can't over prep. Things will just happen. So, uh, you know, yeah, yesterday I pulled a muscle, but today was not felt fine. Today I pull a muscle and I'm like, all right, hopefully tomorrow it's gone. But anyway, so, um, okay, let's talk about the very, uh, here's well, let me answer let me answer this question from Andrew L real quick. Have I ever been kicked out of a garage sale? No, no, no. I, I've never been kicked out of a garage sale because my person my personality is not hostile in any way, right? I take I shelter my own. How do I how do I really explain this? I shelter myself from acting like a fool. Uh, you know all that kind of stuff. Austin's not exactly a super big town, and plus there are a couple things like. I'm about six foot tall. I'm almost 200 pounds. I'm a pretty big dude. And I drive a white foreigner that's lifted like so all these things, you know, and Austin's not big. So like all it takes is like for you to offend someone, they kick you out of their garage show. And then you say, they see your truck around town one day and they key it, you know, like, I don't want to mess with any of that. I don't want to mess with any of that. I don't want to mess with any kind of people come up to me like, Hey man, you're that butthole that like freaking, you know, lost, lost your mind at my garage sale. All that. I don't want to mess with that. I just don't. Um, so I've never been kicked out of a garage sale. I've never been even remotely kicked out of a garage sale. But, uh, and I've never even been part of a heated argument or any of that kind of stuff. I just, you know, look, if things get crazy, I don't, I don't subscribe to that. I don't subscribe to people that dislike what I have to offer. Like I just, I offer and I treat people the way I think I should be treated. And that's just the way it is. I mean, if you treat people with sympathy, even like the most dirtiest, trashiest, crappiest people, you'll still get respect out of those people. And I like that, you know, and that's one of the biggest things. I learned that just working in the ghetto at my last, uh, in parts of the ghetto in one of my last previous jobs. Um, I was a uh, consultant for Marlboro Cigarettes, well, Philip Morris, and I had to work the ghetto in one part of Austin, you know, as they called the east side. But anyway, you know, you get around a lot of really, really, what I think most of society would consider bad people. But the, the what I what I found is that the bad people, there's nothing bad about them. Like they just want to be acknowledged. They just don't want to be treated like dirt anymore. They don't want to treat. They want to be treated with respect. And every time I would go in there, I'd be laughing, giving them the respect that they needed because I'm no better than them, right? I'm no better than the guy that walks in that is blasting rap music out his door and his door's like open like a Lamborghini, you know, on a you know, like 1970s Cadillac and I'm, you know, with rims on it. And I'm no better than that. Like I look at that and that, that's just art to me. Like that's what he wanted to spend his money on. And like how hypocritical would it be f for me to say, you can't do that. Like, it just doesn't make any sense to me. So you treat the person with respect <clears throat> and you get to realize that there's a, there's a culture, you know, there's, just a, there's a culture there just like any other town that has a culture with Asians or Italians or Russians or whatever, you know, like there's just a culture in the ghetto. It's its own culture and you got to respect it, you know? That's just the way it is. So anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the funny thing, I don't really actually have, this is some comments coming in about, do I hustle in the ghetto? I don't hustle in the ghetto, but the ghetto in Austin, Texas is the east side. And the east side is getting very gentrified right now. Um, you know, that's a really terrible word to really say, but like it, it just, that's, that's what you hear on the news. And it, it is the real world. Uh, and, you know, when a town gets really amazing and it hosts a bunch of events and we have a Formula One here. We have everything here. We have Austin City Limits Festival. We have, you know, all this crazy stuff. A lake running through town. Amazing downtown. The biggest music scene in the world. Uh, South by Southwest Festival. We have all these crazy things happening in town. And all these tourists come in and they want to, like, live here. 
Um, but that being said, like, you know, the growth expands, right? And the east side is the only thing close to the center part of the town that hasn't realized its actual real estate values. But they're getting close. I mean, it's pretty expensive to live there, honestly. Um, so the east side was the ghetto in Austin 10 years ago, 15 years ago. And uh, there's still good things to be found then, and there's still good things to be found now because then the newer crowd moves in, buys quality items, um, you know, pretty decent. The ghetto crowd, uh, yeah, some of the ghetto crowds usually baby clothes and like really crappy things, but um, certain ones are collectors, right? It's just the way it is. So um, nothing against the ghetto, nothing against any of that kind of stuff. Uh, the, the, the learning here is, you know, just feel the energy of tip number, you know, tip number two, feel the energy and um, make sure that uh, you trust your own hunches. It's very important to trust your hunches. If you feel as if you don't belong there and it's getting a little heated or whatever, or you're just like, I'm not going to get a deal that I want here. I can just tell then why even hang around one more second, right? Just go. All right. <laughs> so, um, all right. So can pants says I'm Chris, the bona fide hustler. Everyone else is just a bunch of busters. Yeah. Pretty funny. Um, clearing clutter for clarity. I want your forerunner. Have you seen my forerunner yet? Anyway, I like it a lot. I mean, I had to only bad. Only weird thing is I had to pay a new amount of money. For, I mean, I had to buy it new because there were just none of them used. Um, it's a certain model, a certain trim, a certain everything. And it was custom done. So, um, I had to buy it new. Um, okay. So, uh, number three, uh, we are at 226. I'll get to a Q and a here after, right after this one, guys. Um, let me pull this down. I feel bad because I keep looking up and it's like, I should be looking at you guys. Um, okay. So, all right. I mean, we just talked about this one, but like observe the, uh, how do I say it? Okay. So observe the tones in listings when you are in, Craigslist making your list or in Yard Sale Treasure Map and you're reading over like how what, if you're going to decide to go to this garage sale or not, put it on your list or not put it on your list. Try to get the overall tone of what's going on in the listing, right? If the tone seems very, you know, if you see crazy words of like everything must go, love that one. Um, everything's a dollar fundraiser, right? Fundraiser one. Pfft, man, always make good money on fundraiser sales usually because they just want to go to wherever they want to go. And it's a lot of times, like fundraisers, you find crazy deals. Church sale, love it. Uh, church sales, you can find incredible profits at church sales. Um, moving out of the country, really good one. I love that one. Um, but yeah, everything must go. Moving out of the country, church sales, fundraisers. Uh, and then, uh, you know, no offer refused or no reasonable offer refused. All those are great things that are tone related. Like it's the tone of the actual written material. So, you know. If you look at an ad and the tone's like, Discman, $45, Boombox, $35. Come by and check everything out. We also have a table, $300. We also have an entertainment center, $250. And you start thinking like, this is dumb. Like they're not explaining anything. The tone's very final. And plus they got all these things already. The, the prices are already on them. You probably don't want to go to that sale, okay? You want to go to the ones like everything must go. Eight families are going to be here. Um, uh, you know, those are real, real nice and direct. Like we got a goal when we have this sale, when we open in the morning and we close out, you know, four hours later, everything's going to be gone. Like, that's good. You want to be there. So understand tone and how tone relates. Now take it one step further. And, uh, when you're actually at a garage sale, and this is going back to a previous point, even this morning when I was at the garage sale and they're like, everything's a dollar except for things that are clearly worth more than a dollar, but all right, cool. And, uh, you know, I still found great things. Uh, but then I got to, you know, I was like, are you guys moving or, you know, like, how would they just start liquidating? This is what I call liquidation mode when people are just like, yeah, dollar, yeah, dollar. Uh, yeah, you can just have that, you know. Um, I, you know, are you just moving? Not that it mattered, but are you just moving? Just kind of to test if I could predict what they were going to say. And I was like, They're, these guys are moving. This is exactly what's happening. And of course, she was like, yeah, we're moving to Mexico. So, um, you know, when you want to liquidate things, it's always because you're probably moving to some other part of the town or you're moving out of the country or out of the state. Um, and you got to get rid of things at ridiculously low prices. So those, yes, hover around those sales a little bit longer than usual. Go through every box. Very, very important. And um, that's the tone of the seller. Like if you can see that the tone of the seller right when you're in visual distance of them, you can hear them and you hear the tone and the tone sounds right and it's clicking. You're like, all right. I got to stay a little bit longer than this one. Very important. Okay. Um, 
All right, so let's go into <laughs> what's up, old school Ace. Um, I think I'm hustling with a guy named Halturi tomorrow from the green room, and then I believe I'm hustling with Q next Saturday from the green room, and then after that, I should still be in town for one thing. And uh, old school Ace, if you want to go hustling, let's do it, man. You know, it'd be awesome. Archetype, uh, how do I find garage sales? I use Craigslist and I use a yard sale treasure map, which is an app. Um, let's go into the Q&A real quick. And if you guys are enjoying the show, look, we, we come across this dilemma every single time, which is I see 45 people watching, right? But there's only 20 people that made a decision to like this video. You know, I'm not a rocket engineer, but, you know, there's at least... 25 to 24 people that haven't done anything right you haven't even decided whether you liked or disliked this video you can choose one or the other well all i'm saying is just act and hook me up all right so we got the uh mineral water on deck someone guess what my favorite mineral water is and i'm gonna tell you right now it's not this one but this one was on deal so i had to get it mm, it's good but my favorite mineral water mineral water guess it I'm pretty sure someone's going to guess it within five comments. I'm pretty sure I'm going to see it. Smash the like button. Good use goods. Thank you so much. Darren Eckelman, I'm not surprised. You always like all the stuff that I put out. I really appreciate appreciate your support over the months and the years, man. <laughs> Fawn M, my mistake. I forgot to like the video. Thank you. <laughs> a rocket engineer. That's what, I, that's what I'm talking about. My favorite tie, okay, my favorite brand of mineral water. Guess it real quick. And think of a question about garage sales real quick. Because now we're in the QA portion, which is solid 28 minutes of QA. That's the way I really wanted the show to be. Half teach you something and half you ask me and I I hit you back. Um, there you go. Archetype knows what's up. Pellegrino. That's my favorite one. I love it. It's so good. Um, anyway. <laughs> Well, there you go, Darren. Thank you. Darren's saying, thanks, Bonafide. I've been watching your other channel as well. Bod damn. That's right. And I got after this, right after this this episode here, I have to edit a video for the workout channel. In fact, I did a bicep finisher workout yesterday, and that was all filmed. So that's going up on the channel uh, today. So San Pellegrino. Oh, it's so good. Okay, here we go. Steven Stafford, do I use search words on yard sale treasure map? Um, I don't. I use search words on Craigslist. I like that one better. Yard sale treasure map doesn't pull every single Craigslist thing. It gets a lot of them, though. Um, and I, they, I think they're the only app that has the legal... How do I say this? Like they, They're the only app that, can, that Craigslist is not filing any lawsuits against or anything that can pull from their data. Some of the other ones are having trouble doing that, and so you don't get as complete of data from some of these other apps. But the yard sale treasure map, let's say if there's 100 listings on Craigslist for garage sales, I believe yard sale is going to pull about 80 onto the map. But there's still 20 that are not going to be seen unless you're doing, or unless you plan your route the old school way, which is the way where you just look through Craigslist, you type in search terms, and Craigslist is very fast. The advantage to yard sale treasure map is very clear. You get to see exactly where the location of the sale is on a bird's eye view. That's really important. Um, you get that a little bit on Craigslist, but you don't get it in relation to other sales, right? You have to just pull out of one listing, go into another. Sometimes you have to search the address. It's really annoying. But um, And the same thing is with a yard sale treasure map. If the address is off by a little bit or it's very vague, they'll just put a dot kind of close to where they think this thing is, but not necessarily more where it actually is. So, you, you know, they both have their, like, quirks. But if you, mend them, if you mesh them together, look, if you don't have time to make a list, then absolutely use Yard Sale Treasure Map, okay? If you have the time to make a bang-up list and you want to make a lot of money and treat this, like, really, really, really seriously, then make a Craigslist list and then supplement with yard sale treasure map or make a uh, make a yard sale treasure map list and then supplement with craigslist you know what i'm saying so all right um some questions coming in i like this uh, old school ASS right treat people how you would want to be treated so important guys i mean this is like a life lesson this is not even garage sale related this is just like if you don't do this i mean what a world of hurt you must be living in. Like, it's just, no, it must not be fun. It's just, you got to treat people with respect. It doesn't matter if they're in the same socioeconomic class as you, you know, all that. If they're different colors, if they're purple, black, Indian, green, per, you know, it doesn't matter. 
I mean, treat them with respect. Doesn't matter what they look like either. Like as in, if they have three arms, five arms, one leg, like who cares? Um, although a five arm dude with one leg would look pretty sweet. Um, okay. <laughs> Thirsty Treasures is saying something about something. Okay, so let's get a question real quick. I can't follow this conversation. There's a lot of there's a lot of comment in the feed. And here we go from Soaking Pond. Um, if Bonafide continues this series, maybe he can get guests that can co-host his live show. <laughs> um, look, if we if you guys are okay, if I have someone in the feed right now that is a die-hard garage sale, I'm talking like you live, breathe, love garage sales, and you're kind of on, you know we're on the same wavelength and everything, I would not be opposed to putting you on the show on the halfway mark, right? I would just give you the link and uh, you can just appear here on the screen and we can help people out together. You know, as long, yeah, I'm, I'm all good with that. So how far do I drive for garage shows? Do I do a mile limit on Craigslist search? Look, when I do my mileage log at every Saturday morning, it's somewhere, the low end would be 47 miles total, like everything. That's including tacos, dopios, whatever else I need to do. Um, 47 seems to be the lowest I've ever done. And then the highest is uh, 83 or so, something like that. Um, yeah. So that's what I remember seeing right now in the mileage log. Uh, usually, on the average, I'm around 57, 59. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask another... We're going to answer another question. Are there any items you ask... For specifically at every sale, yes. Uh, Nerdtron64, I would need you to look at uh, video one, two, and three of this series, and I talk about this in, I think, video one. Um, but you should always have three items that when someone says, hey, what are you guys looking for this morning? Or what are you looking for this morning? You better be able to rifle off three things that you wish you could find, three genres of things, okay? Because if you sit there and rattle off, well, I'm looking for a 1994 GT Timberline. I'm looking for Super Mario Brothers 3 on an NES system, and I'm also looking for an old German beer stein. All right, so that's not the right thing to say. What you want to say is, all right, look, I'm looking for anything. Do you have anything beer or Bruyana related? Um, video games, and um, I'm looking, uh, you know, I love cycling, so anything cycling related is cool too. Now you've opened it up really broad. I mean, it's like, holy crap chances of them having something there is pretty high. So that's what you want to do, all right? You want to be sure that you always have the three that you say ready to go. And that way, you know, while you're petering through the garage sale and looking at stuff, you're going to get that question. You keep petering through and you just say it like, yeah, I'm looking for this, this, this. And oh, really? Oh, man. Go get Timmy to come down with the his stupid video games that are in a box. Go tell him to come down or just go get the box. And uh, yeah, I've had that happen many times, actually. <laughs> So there's so many, uh, you know, little tricks, but uh, one of the easiest trick is you be ready when they ask you questions. If you're an approachable type person and if you are a friendly type person, which is the same thing as approachable, but um, if you're a friendly type person, how do I say this? Friendly is more like, you know, hot as hell today, right? Yeah, yeah, super hot, ha, ha, you know? And then approachable is like, hey, excuse me real quick. You're getting a little bit closer, right? And it's a little, excuse me real quick, um, I can't seem to find this place. Can you help me find it? That's more approachable because that's like in your immediate space. Friendly is, uh, I don't know, it's just more of like a more distance thing, I think. So, yeah, I mean, just uh, be friendly. Be a friendly and try to become approachable even if you're not. Really work hard on that because that's where that question stems from. Right. I mean, if you were to go to every garage sale, oh, hey, what's going on? Yeah, nice weather. Hey, do you have any bikes, video games, or you know this? I mean, it's just more of like, okay, this dude's a total collector. Like they just know, like oh, this guy's just like a super reseller. You can kind of pick it out. Now, if they ask you, like, you guys looking for anything in particular? Like, well, at some point today, I hope we can find a bike. Um, you know, some we always like collecting video games, and then uh, which is true. Like I collect video games not a whole lot, but I collect them. So now I think, okay, he's just a collector. He's not a reseller. And then the other one is just, uh, you know, remote control cars. Love them. You know, always liked them as a kid, messing with them if you have any of those. So sometimes that works too. Um, Steven Stafford, did I trade in the FJ for more space? I had two FJ Cruisers. Uh, I think they bought the first one in like 20, I don't know, 11, maybe 10. Um, 
from a place kind of close by and it was a great great truck i think i bought it with like sixty thousand miles and then i turned it in with like eighty eight thousand um for no real reason other than i got upsold pretty quick at the dealership um when I, we were going in for a Prius, right? They were just like, well, okay, if I make you a sick deal on two cars, would you buy them? And we're like, ah, fine, you know. I liked the FJ a lot. I liked my previous spaceship. Um, I liked it. But the thing is, I'd only, I'd, I had only driven around for like a year and a half. And then I, I was like, oh, it'd be sweet to own an FJ with much less miles, the better motor, you know, all that kind of stuff. Because they changed the motor in like 2010. And uh, I was like, I would love to. And I would love to have a white one, right? I was just like, it would be nice if it was white. And then, of course, I go to the dealership and they have the exact one there. And so I buy it. Um, but then it has, it has zero miles. Now I know, like, I'm responsible of, like, the upkeep. And that was an amazing experience. I had it for two years. And then I started realizing in the span of two years, like, I didn't like the fact that the only two windows that go down in this entire truck were the driver's side and the passenger side, right? Every other window that you see on the truck doesn't even go down or up. You, the rear window can be, like, propped up kind of like it's really hard to explain but it just can pop up it doesn't go down or anything and uh the back seat has this weird suicide door system which i absolutely hated um so for hustling it was okay you know it wasn't bad but then when you start thinking of like friends and family and like the possibility of having kids later on like having suicide doors is a freaking nightmare when you're in a parking spot next to somebody it is like the biggest nightmare ever to have doors that open up like this sucks so bad um so at that point, I was like, I got to get out of this vehicle. Although it was the only vehicle in America, still is the only vehicle in America right now that has retained its entire value and is starting to ascend in value if you buy the right years. Um, so I got a great deal trading it in, and then I got a foreigner, which is depreciating very, very, very slow. I like that too. Um, and it's got all the room in the world, a little bit bigger, four doors, not suicide type, and the back window goes down, plus every other window goes down. It's a, it's a much better truck for what I'm doing. So anyway um yeah don't ever be afraid to buy a new vehicle by the way like you know most people are like oh new is kind of scary yeah, if you buy the right vehicle new is not bad at all especially if you have the 10-year outlook or 15-year outlook on your vehicle and you know you want to put all the miles on it and you want this thing to go you know across the usa a bazillion times and all this yeah, that's one of those scenarios where maybe getting a new vehicle is a smarter idea because you break it in yourself, you know everyone that's ever driven it before, and that's kind of like a peace of mind kind of thing. I saw a commercial yesterday on TV where it was like, Enterprise rent a car. Not only do we rent a cars, but we sell them too, and we'll pick you up. You know, like, And I was like, damn, they sell cars. I knew they always sold cars, but can you imagine buying a rental car uh, you know, with 40,000 miles from you know Enterprise knowing that I mean, at least 200, you know, I don't, I don't know, maybe I'm exaggerating, but at least 200 other people have driven this car and that's 200 different driving styles. Like that scares the hell out of me. Like, I don't like that. Like that just freaks me out to, to no end to just know that because of 200 other people's driving habits, this thing might break down at the Grand Canyon when it's like 120 degrees. Like that freaks me out. I don't like that. So, um, yeah, they get pretty ragged out. I mean, I look, when I get a rental car, like, I'm not exactly treating it the same as I treat my own car. It's just not my car. I mean, I don't know how to explain it. But uh, anyway, so yeah, don't ever be afraid to buy something new. And if you don't buy anything new, make sure you buy a certified pre-owned car from the dealership that made the car. So just because like, oh yeah, I found this amazing Toyota. It's at Saab and they're certifying it at Saab. I'm like, yeah, no, no, it should be certified at Toyota and bought from Toyota. That's just the way it is. If you buy used and buy a certified from the dealership that makes the car that's important so i've done i've gone since i've since i've turned 16 i've probably owned about 23 or 27 cars something like that cars and trucks so i've been around i've had a lot of experience with this stuff and it's a lot of fun so um i like cars i like uh, it's an extension of you know if you're, you're spending a lot of time in a car just like you're spending a lot of time sleeping in a bed you should have a pretty nice bed uh, and i always say a little bit more on the expensive side not so much on the cheap side because one third of your life is remaining in that bed and laying down. And I like to give myself the best chances of an amazing sleep, right? That's where you get the best gains and regenerative things and toxins, detox, all that kind of stuff all happens in sleep. So why go cheap on that? Um, same thing with a vehicle. You spend a large portion of your life in a vehicle and want it to be reliable, want it to take you places. I'm not really on the cheap side of that one either. Just not. So, <laughs> so Econ Pond says, uh, 
We all know that you abused that Volkswagen Beetle Turbo in, in Florida. I actually, I actually did. So I mean, I really did. So anyway, um, any more questions? We're all, we're just gonna have bona fide banter here. Um, here's one from Stephen Stafford. How long have you hustled garage sales? Um, you know, I started hustling about eleven years ago. Almost about twelve now at this point. And uh, I th think it was. I think I've realistically been doing garage sales for about eight years, maybe eight and a half, because I know with my previous girlfriend, so I have a wife now, but before her, there was somebody and I was going to garage sales with her a whole bunch. And, uh, we were, you know, it was, a, we were enjoyed that, but we were doing a lot of pawn shops too. Um, because I, company, you know, at the weekend, I'll out the mini bus seats and I would go to pawn shops and I would just, throw bikes in there right as many as i could and just go to pawn shops and that's how i made you know really really good money and i could still do that now and it was you know but things have branched out now now there's fba now there's much smaller goods and i don't have to get all crazy with bikes all the time and um there's just smarter ways to make money now so um <clears throat> it's not that i abandon it it's just that I, I do it sparingly now um but i've been doing it for about eight years uh eight, eight and a half how long did it take until i was a pro um I really think the pro level came, I would say four or five years ago. You know, it didn't take very long at all, actually. But uh, I'm not a mistake going every single Saturday. Like you could not pull me away from going to garage sales, and even till to now, present day, it's very hard to pull me away from a Saturday unless I know. You know, that's the part that I, that I, that's the part that about garage sales that I don't like is that, uh, you know, when you when you're pulling five hundred to fifteen hundred dollars a weekend, right? And then you get pulled away from that. Then no matter what pulls you away from that, you have to associate that with like, well, I just basically paid five to fifteen hundred bucks for whatever I'm about to do. You know, if I'm spending time with the family at the house or whatever, you have to come to realization that that's the that's just only being logical, right? Because if you were to remain in your town on that one weekend, you're likely to make five hundred to fifteen hundred bucks, right? And that's about the average, somewhere in there. But uh, that's the worst part about garage sales, guys. Is that thought process is very uh, it's only a real hustler would completely understand where I'm coming from on this one. And a real hustler starts realizing like, crap, you know, if I have to go to a wedding, right. Or this and that. And I mean, it just cuts into garage sales. Or if I have to go to some, some person's brunch or something, you're like, dude, that's going to totally cut into my garage sales. So anytime that my wife knows now, like don't ever program anything on Saturday mornings ever. There's just no way. So if we do trips, we leave on Sundays, <laughs> right? We come back, uh, you know, I, we try to, if I'm going to miss a Saturday, I try not to miss two in a trip, right? I try to miss maybe one and try to get a 13 day trip out of like what's going on. Like I don't try to miss too many Saturdays. Very important. Now, if I'm going to miss a Saturday, it doesn't mean I'm not going to somewhere. I would try to, I will try to hustle there as well. You know, that's very important. So it's not like I'm truly missing out completely, but I'll be in a, put in a completely different element where I don't know the streets. I don't know the roads. I don't know the neighborhoods. And I'm like, it's, it's high chance. I'm not going to do as well. That's just the bottom line. So Aaron Eckelman says, uh, E-Money has my back when I can't hustle. Well, we don't have the agreement that when he hustles with me, we split half and half. Um, but uh, it's not to the point where if I leave town, he's going to pick up. It's not there yet. And it, it, it probably won't be there because he can't commit the, the time that I commit to all this stuff. So, um, yeah, I'm telling you, it, it's, it's part of a Hustlers Anonymous where you go in there and you're like, hello, I'm addicted. That's right. Um, like Kent Daigle saying, hello, my name is Bonafide and I'm addicted to garage sales. That's true. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's just fun. So Mr. Sadie 123 says, I have... Um, American bike and fine condition conservative value should I part it out send me a picture to that one send me a picture of that I've never actually heard of a Mar Marukin sorry I've heard of Maruishi, Maruishi but never Marukin E-Money is not full time Darren E-Money is uh, he's training to be a nurse right now and he does very limited hustling at this point um, Heartwise 777 have I had any luck with Friday garage sales yeah, I mean, today, uh, a month ago, Friday, I had great luck with it too. Um, but usually, no, but I've had it. So I, it makes me go out there. <clears throat> but the garage sales are just, you know, if you look at what's out there in Austin today versus what's there tomorrow, I mean, it's just night and day difference. There's like 10 times more garage sales tomorrow, maybe 20 more, 20 times more. Um, clearing Clutter for Clarity. Bonafide, do I ever buy overstocks from people 
who couponed to send to Amazon. I don't. Um, I see it sometimes out there, but I don't. Um, Kent Daigle, let me make 100% sure I have. Oh, yeah. Is there a set cash limit I take to a garage sale? No, but it is at this point now. It's somewhere in that three to $500 range. He's right. Um, back in the day, it was like in the $700 range, but I just got smarter about everything and I'm doing smarter buys. You know, you start seeing less bikes at garage sales too, you know, and that was one of the big things that would drain money back then was finding bikes at garage sales. I think those are a little bit, you know, the only things that cost me money these days, um, bikes are all, you know, I'll, I know bikes real well, so I pay up when I see one that I want. Um, receivers, certain receivers, I have to pay up for those. Outside of that, everything's pretty cheap at garage sales. Like everything's pretty cheap. I'm, you know, maybe a juicer or this or that might start being around the $40, $50 range, but everything's pretty cheap. I mean, if I want to launch a hundred bucks and spend it, you better be sure. And I am that this is absolutely a hustle that's going to go correctly. Like that's the only way I get into that. Um, there comes a point where I'm like, I'm not scared to lose a dollar, five bucks, 10 bucks, sometimes even 20, but, uh, you know, we're going to get in that, that 50, a hundred dollar range. Yeah. It's not that I'm scared. It's just that there better be insane return. If I want to risk 50 bucks. So if I'm going to risk 50, there better be a top end of like 500 bucks or 700 bucks. That's where I start going to make sense. Do I ever go to estate sales? This is coming from clearing clutter for clarity. I do. I don't prefer them, right? Because there's a whole lot of competition there. The prices are jacked up. Um, but you can find incredible goods there. In fact, uh, you know, some of the things I even wear to this day, I found at estate sales. My marmot down jacket, estate sale, $8. Um, but I go there. It's just a whole lot of waiting too. Like I like to go there once it's opened. I let an hour pass by or something. Cause in the first hour, that's when the crazy rush is there. And it's really hard to like even stand around or anything like that. Plus if you have an arm full of goods and there's people all over the estate sale, it's like super impossible to like get anything accomplished. Then you got to walk to the front, go to the holding area, put your stuff down, then go back around the house. You know what I'm talking about? It's just not fun. But if there are less people in the house, then it's a little bit more fun. Cause then you can start, you know, moving around faster and everything because everything's about speed. I mean, let's, let's face it, but I did go to an estate sale not too long ago and I did pretty decent at some things, but I don't prefer them. I don't prefer them because here in Austin, there are enough garage sales to where you don't have to do estate sales, but clearly in other parts of the country, there's more estate sales than there are garage sales. And so I just think that the, the, the competition is always going to be found at the estate sales always. So we can pond do, bonafide. Do I remember what is the most I ever paid for an item at a garage sale? Um, no, I wish I could I tell you what that was, but I mean, I've been, you know, I've bought 100, 200, 300, $400, um, bicycles at garage sales. Um, there was a scooter that I bought. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't a garage sale. That was 600 bucks, um, from someone. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, if you're going to shell out big money, it's from things that you absolutely know a whole, whole lot about when college picker and I did the, uh, video game, a uh, big ass video game hall that we had that one day um, that we all sent off to FBA. The very, I mean, we, we did the dumbest thing. I mean, it was the greatest hall ever and we didn't cover it for anything. We're both content creators. We didn't even like cover it for the green room. We didn't cover it for YouTube. We just, we just got it all done. We just knocked it all out. It took like five and a half hours to get all that stuff bubble wrapped, categorized. Um, and yeah, but that was 200, like 50 or 275 bucks. Um, that was a pretty big one, but we got a lot of money out of that one. So anyway, um, yeah, I know a lot about products and the ones you know most about, you'll be so comfortable spending money on that stuff. It's just the way it is. Are garage sales your biggest source, uh, for products? Um, I mean, yes and no. I mean, it just depends. Uh, you know, I go in different modes, so it really depends on the mode that I feel like messing with in the week. Uh, garage sales are, is a, is a great mode, right? But thrift stores are, is, is a good mode too. Like it's a default mode. So if I'm just, I feel as if, you know, I've seen a, a couple targets and I've seen some Rosses and I'm seeing some Walmarts and I'm not seeing, I'm seeing pretty dry clearance shelves and pretty dry, just overall markdowns and all that kind of stuff. Then I'll go into thrift mode or, you know, it just depends. I mean, sometimes I get into RA mode and it comes out of nowhere. I just do, but I have to see certain signals that lead me to start going to other stores and going, okay, I found a great deal here. Now I got to go to each and every one of these, whatever store it is and buy every single one in the vicinity of like 15 miles or 20 miles. Um, 
that happens every now and then. It just does. Um, but I like garage sales. I like thrift stores. I like pawn shops. Um, I mean, I like it all. I really do. Um, and I like teaching. So I like creating content. That's a lot of fun. So teaching, creating content is really good. So a lot of things behind the scenes with the green room that we work behind the scenes. So, and the green room is paying money. So that's just one of those uh, income streams that, um, you know, I definitely want to work on. So, um, we have Darren Eckelman question here, Chris, or a remark, Chris, if I was your brother, I would be hustling 24 seven. I know, but, uh, he has real crazy goals when it comes to the nursing program. So, um, yeah, so Darren Eckelman, this is a good one. I pay up for hot items that flip like quick, like calculators. Calculators are almost everything, every time, or at least any calculator that is in demand right now, right, would be a sub 50 thing on Amazon usually or sub 100 rank item on Amazon. Meaning if you are relatively competitive on price, relatively, okay, because if you're competitive on price, it's going to go, it's going to sell within one to three days. Okay. If you're competitive, if you're relatively competitive, you're going to sell that thing within a week or two. But the rank is so low that it is gone just like that. If you happen to be just by some weird chance, the lowest one, which is not <coughs> the thing you want to be, right? Because the lowest person always gets hit first and sells day one. Well, that's a great feeling. If you're leaving money on the table, it's kind of stupid. Like, and usually on these, uh, on these uh, low rank items, on these ridiculously low cases where there's low rank and then there's like ridiculously low rank. This is like sub, well, this is like 0.25 of 1%. It's very, 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 very low. It's in the, you know, sub 100. At that point, you're dealing with, you know, a very, very, very fast mover. And so that is one of those situations where market assessment is going to pay the most money. So you got to be thinking that hundreds, if not thousands of these things are, are selling a day. And so, you know, you'll get paid out wherever you shake out. But uh, if you're at the bottom end, yeah, you get paid out. That's great. But then there's also someone that got paid out three days later that might have been 20 or $40, that, you know, higher than you because the person was just like, well, I don't need to convert the money that fast. Like, you know, so you got to think about that as well. Um, there's a question in here. Do I garage sale year round since I live in Texas? Yeah, I would say so. Is fourth quarter good for garage sales? Yeah. Absolutely. In fact, you know, there was one time my parents came in town for the Thanksgiving weekend. This was back in 2015. This is in 2015. Yeah, probably 2015. Let me just think for one second. It might have been the 2014 one. Anyway, but they were here for, you know, they were here for Thanksgiving. They come for the whole week and they were here and Thursday came around and it's just, it's just one of those kind of things that I do Black Friday, right? I go to outlet stores, I go to shoe stores, and I try to get some hustles going for FBA. Um, well, that's what I did last year. Uh, the year before that, I was trying to get hustles for other things because I hadn't, shoes hadn't even been in FBA by that point. And then um, it's well understood that when Saturday comes around, I still go garage sailing. So, you know, you're thinking like, damn, the Saturday after Thanksgiving, there's probably nothing going on. Yeah, there's nothing thing really going on but all it takes is one garage sale out of like five that's off i mean it pays off really good so of course i go to this one garage sale and there's a duffel bag a big ass duffel bag full of some are new with tags or most are new with tags and some are not but they're all ski gloves and alpineering gloves alp alpinist alpinist however you say it. gloves mountaineering gloves all gore-tex um, brands that are like Swanee. There's like, there were so many different amazing brands in there and they all had, most of them had tags. Um, Black Diamond was in there. There was another brand that was really, really, really good that sold so fast. Um, and so, yeah, I popped on the whole thing and it kind of sat in my garage for a while because I was a little, I felt a little overwhelmed with it because I was like, dude, this is a lot of gloves. Like, I don't know. It was easily like 15 pairs and I didn't know really how my angle was to process everything. I wanted to learn a little bit more about the market, you know, and everything. And then I started learning about the market. And I was like, damn, some of these are really expensive. So out of that entire $10 haul, I probably pocketed a nice five to 600 bucks, like just out of that one bag that I picked up that, that day. Um, that's being on the low end. Like I remember that there's at least four gloves that sold over like a hundred bucks. So anyway, um, Really interesting things. I mean, even the crappiest glove that was in that that bag was a pair of Patagonia retro ski gloves. They were mittens, right? They didn't have the individual finger things. They had the little, you know, claw thing. Um, that thing sold for like, I think, 30 bucks. The worst, crappiest condition you could even think of, 30 bucks. So, 
the worst was 30 bucks the highest were over 100 um many many shaking out in the uh, 70 to 80 dollar range so that was a really good one i will when i figure we'll, we'll get to that point in my one of my shows where we do the 10 best things to sell on ebay there's going to come a point where i see those pictures because i'm going down uh picture things if you don't check out my other show okay i have a show as well that I do at least two times a week around this time where I show 10 items that sold on eBay or Amazon or my booth or Craigslist or whatever. And I always put way more than 10, but I just call it 10 because it's a good number. But I'm going through one of my phones. I have you know, several hard drives of pictures and I put all my phone pictures on these hard drives too that I've had throughout the years. So I'm going through some random phone I had in 2013 and I'm going through all the pictures in there and what I sold it for, where I found the item, what I remember selling it for and what I remember buying it for from for. And I know at some point these gloves are going to come down pretty soon because I know at, at this point I'm at August 2013 and I'm proceeding into September and some October ones. I'm not showing every single thing that I'm buying, but I'm bringing a very diverse kind of picture to the table to where you can learn a whole lot through the video. Because if I was to just show you everything I'm hustling, like categorized, like you'd be like, all right, he's doing a whole lot of shoes, a lot of stuff we've seen before. Like, you know, I want to show you things that you haven't seen before so you can learn. Um, but at some point, those gloves will come around because I've taken pictures of every one of them, right? They all went, they all sold on eBay. So, <clears throat> and then we'll get to learn about those gloves at that time. Um, Texas Gal Treasures. Uh, what is she saying here? Afternoon, Chris. What is going on? Um, yes, I did say that I love both you ladies. Um, that includes you, Margaret. Um, what's on my nationality? Totally random. I am half French and half Filipino. That is me. Um, Tanya. Okay. Was BH talking trash? No, I'm not. And there was a question by old school Ace I wanted to. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's saying that I keep a receipt book for my records to write down what I buy. That's totally true. I showed it on last week's show. So it's Check that out. Segment about that. So if you were wondering on what do I do about tax season, like how are I how am, how am I preventing myself from you know the IRS and like how do you ever prove what you paid at a garage sale? Check out episode three on how to garage sale for profit. I talk about it for a solid fifteen minutes or so. How I do it. Um, and we got forty two people. We have fifty one people watching. Check this out. This is what I really love about this, right? Um, forty two people upvote, one downvote. 51 people here. It's a pretty high engagement, guys. Like, you guys are really helping me out. Those who want to like the video, that's great. Um, if you dislike the video, that's cool. All I'm asking you is to act, right, and just to pick one of the two. And uh, let's get these likes up if you want. But uh, if you didn't like the video, it's not a big deal. You can put the thumbs down. I'm okay with that. Um, but uh, I look at these analytics later, and it tells me, like, what shows are better shows to focus more stuff on. So if you like this type of show, you're going to have to definitely hit the like button because it shows make more to me later when I look at it. Um, okay, so I guess that's the last thing. Um, we're at 3.03 p.m. Do I have a scheduled day that I send stuff into FBA or just when I feel like it? No, I try to get the FBA stuff done before Wednesdays. So because I'm a content creator, right? So I have to show the things that I find at garage sales or at least show bulk majority of what I find. Um, which lately I show some of those things in the green room. In fact, a lot of them go to the green room under a video title called Bonafide Fresh Finds. Um, important thing to that I do because it teaches people like what what I, what to look out for. And if you're trying to look at for you know if you're trying to learn more about like what to buy or like what how are people doing FBA, the green room is definitely the place to be. You're gonna have to check that out. Um, yes, I'm gonna toot my own horn because it's a really good place to be. Um, Check out green room, greenroomuniversity.com. Very important. Check it out and you know join our crew. Be part of it. Now, if you don't want to be part of it, but you definitely want to get something free from the Bonafide Hustler to you, then we have 100 amazing items to resell. Now, it's not an actual physical thing like you're seeing me holding, but it is a digital PDF guide that you can put right to your phone and study before tomorrow. That's right. Study before tomorrow, make more money. And then when you figure out like, hey, you know, I'm making money off the guide, there must be better things in the room. That's what it's all about. So um, have fun with, uh, you know, you can ask people here. I see a bunch of members here, you know, I see a bunch of members in the room and they can tell you whether the green room is worth it or not. Um, I, I love the, I love the place because we decided to, I decided um, early on, this is before Ray and everything, before Steve P or, you know, we got to make a room that teaches people or that brings a lot of things together to where, you learn through other people and you learn through the admins that are guiding the 
conversation and there's plenty of resources to learn about stuff at the back end. Like if you didn't want to be in the Facebook group and you're just like, I want to learn more stuff about courses or more bolos, like it's just a place where you can learn. And, and we created it because we didn't have it. It's so important. That's the rule about business. You create something that you, if there's a lack of it, create it and it should be well received if it's done in good faith. So um, will the greener memberships be discounted again? I don't know. I, can, I never know that one. It's more of a raking thing, and quite honestly, um, we did about twice a year, I think. Um, but yeah, John, uh, there's a question from John, how much is the green room? It's 30 bucks a month, and we have a $200 a year plan too, which if you do the math, then yeah, you start realizing that one is basically almost half the cost of the other over the course of the year, but up to you. Um, Steven Stafford, I'm joining the green room during fourth quarter when my sales go up. Yeah, um, that's one of the things that when, when people come in, they're just like, uh, we get, I've seen this recently and like, hello, I'm new, hello, I'm new to the green room, want to start FBA or I'm really good at eBay, really good at Craigslist. Um, you know, the second I made, you know, even a little bit of sales enough to get a monthly part of membership or, you know, a yearly membership, I could decide to come in. And that is a very smart thinking process right there because, you know, this person's making a decision to forego further inventory or at least, a, at least a chunk of inventory. And they're going like, you know what? I'm going to train my brain faster right now. Like that's very important. When you start investing in yourself, whether it be a seminar group, paid course, anything, that's a very important thing to, you know, that you see very few people doing that now, which is the reason why the green room, you know, the reselling community is 50,000 people deep and the green room only has 729 of those people in there. So it just goes to show you that the mentality of spending, spending money to make money is smaller than you think, right? The people that invest in themselves now, we're talking about a really, really small group of people. But when you get in the green room, you'll see, you'll realize why it's such a good idea. So you'll figure it out pretty quick. Everyone does. So anyway, um, I guess that's pretty much it. I really thank you guys from gals for an hour and seven minutes. Um, so quite, there's a remark in here. I don't know why people would thumbs down. Um, you know, there's all kinds of people in this world and some people just feel as if they didn't get the value, you know, an hour, that's fine. But I aim for the show to be instructional, uh, you know, give you guys tips and then answer questions uh, at least as many as I can. And uh, for it to be, you know, semi-friendly banter to where we feel like friends. And that's a very important kind of feel for my show. I don't want it to be just boring and monotonous. You know, if I feel like cutting up and making jokes, I will. And that's just the way it is on these shows. But um, I, I definitely want to thank everyone for maintaining the positivity, being good, um, and, uh, you know, being charged up about garage sales. This is very important. So if you did like and you found value in this show, right, then check out episode one, two, and three from the shows before I always discuss three completely different tips on each show. So it's really good. Plus I answer a bunch of questions that, uh, you know, so it's, it's basically like having three tips, you know, then right now there's about 12 solid tips among the course of four shows, plus an endless amount of questions that seem to have come through plus some really funny parts in some of those other episodes. So you got to check it out. Steven Stafford says, thanks for the live show to friend. Today was my first day garage sale hustling. What? Wow. Normally I just do thrifting. Wow. Amazing. So yeah, if you want low cost, amazing inventory and just the feeling of just scoring gold, garage sales is the way to be. Like you're just going to get every chance possible to uh, get into the game and get addicted. Garage sales are fun. So clearing clutter for clarity. Thanks again for sharing with us. You are welcome. Um, Heartwise777, my girlfriend wants to start hustling full time. I'm going to send her to the green room when she's ready. I think it's well worth the price. It is. It's well worth the price. Um, you know, whenever you're ready, we'll be ready. So we, we say it like that. We don't want to force you to do anything. But uh, whenever you're ready, I, uh, you know, the sooner you can learn, the more money you make. So, um, all right. That's pretty much it, guys. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you later on Periscope when I talk a little bit more about a garage sale stories today. And then if you're in the green room, there's a high chance. I might talk through this haul that I got today. You know, nothing crazy, but uh, but yeah. Anyway, so it should be it should be pretty fun. Good to see you guys. Take it easy and goodbye.